Phase two of free agency still rolling. The 49ers lose a cornerback and might be losing one of their pass rushers as well. I've got a trade offer for Eric Crocker. I'm not giving up on trading Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> yet. And uh, Crocs got a story about uh, one of the defensive back prospects in this draft that might be potentially a future 49er. All that and more coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. Thanks for making us your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. The 49ers score sheet as it pertains to free agents, uh, still more losses than gains. And the 49ers have lost one, might have lo be losing another as well. Let's start this off, though, with K1 Williams per sources. The Broncos are set to sign free agent cornerback Kwan Williams. The 30-year-old has been with San Francisco for at least five for the last five seasons, played 72% of the defensive snaps last year. The deal is worth $2.5 million per year on those two years. Uh, that is from KOA Colorado Brandon Cristal. So Kwan Williams, he's gone. I think it's not much of a surprise at all, right, Croc? No surprise. And, and I've been asked about it. Uh, one of our locked on hosts, Cody Rourke, you know, he hit me and said, Hey, tell me a little bit about Kawan Williams. And I said, you know, everything 10 yards and in, he's amazing. I think he's extremely physical. He's aggressive in both the passing game and run game in that area. I think if you're a team that wants to play a little bit more, you know, primary off coverage and has him do things where he's playing in the slot in zone and has to cover an area, he's terrific. But if you ask him to play a lot of man and he has to <laughs> cover passes or routes that go past 10 yards, I think that's when they can get a little iffy with him. And we've seen, you know, really zero resistance on slot fades and things like that. Fortunately for the 49ers, they went to a little bit more too high. So you're able to kind of hide them. But when they wanted to go single high and teams ran those uh, verticals out on, on the seams and the uh, slots, he had trouble with that. So I won't miss that aspect of it, but Kwan Williams, I thought he had a good, uh, good stint with the 49ers, especially someone who was, coming off of an injury when the 49ers signed him from uh, yeah. Cleveland Browns. Yeah, I always love the way K1 Williams played. I think he's well respected around the locker room. Um, and it's funny because Cody Rourke hit me up with the same question and our scouting reports match up Crocs. So uh, we're seeing <laughs> the same things there, but look, he's a player. The 49ers, I think had to walk, let walk at this point. He was going to get a pay raise. I don't think the 49ers were in position that they wanted to do that. They drafted a guy in the fifth round last year in Diamador Lenore that I think they view as a future slot cornerback. And as good as K1 Williams has been, really underrated player for a long time, you know, getting into his 30s, speed already a problem deep down the field, and teams really knew how they could attack the 49ers when he was on the field. And we started to see it more and more, and I think it could have been more and more of a problem. But uh, I love how big he plays for how small he is. Really physical guy. Love seeing the way he he defends the run, even though he's, what, 5'9", 185 maybe? I, I feel like he's like 180. Yeah. So uh, it's sad to see K1 Williams go. He's a player I really liked, but I think it made sense for the 49ers to let him test free agency and walk, and we'll see how they end up replacing K1 Williams. But it was a good little nugget there, 72% of the snaps, and that's even a little, I would have guessed 60, 65, 72% of the snaps. That's a lot. I mean, nickel is the, is the new base, right? So uh, whoever is the slot defender for the 49ers, whether it's somebody they, they take in the draft, if it's Jimmy Ward who drops down more often, if they bring Ambry Thomas on the field, because we talked about that potentially with uh, with Ambry Thomas coming in as the third cornerback playing outside corner with Emmanuel Mosley jumping into the slot. I mean, that'll still give Ambry Thomas 70 percent of the snaps on defense, which is a lot. So Charvarius Ward isn't really even replacing Ambry Thomas if that's the way the 49ers decide to uh, defend things when they go to their nickel defense, but they do have some options there and, and could potentially look into the draft for a, another player as well, either at safety or, uh, or nickel corner. We'll see what happens with Jaquaski tart, but definitely wish K1 Williams the best. He was a fun player to yeah. watch. Shark guys, little nickname. Shark. They said he, he, he just moves in silence. And I like <laughs> how does. for someone that is so quiet, uh, when he makes a play, he does a little thing where he has like the shark fin. 
Yeah. I was like, pretty, pretty cool. I like him. I will but, miss him. Just yeah. the player he was. It was fun watching him. Absolutely. A couple of uh, a, a deal that could be coming. It's looking like our, the 49ers really haven't been too keen on re-signing their own guys, Croc. I don't know what that tells us about how they constructed their roster or if they just are okay with um, Chris Kucerich doing things with really cheap players and scrap heap players and off-the-street free agents and, and letting them have their career years and then go cashing in somewhere else because we've seen it multiple times now. And Arden Key is now visiting with the Detroit Lions per Mike Garofolo. Uh Arden Key headed to visit with the Lions yesterday. Coming off a six and a half sack season with the 49ers, working on his technique to generate consistent pressure, hearing there's a few teams in the mix for him, but he starts with a meeting with Detroit. So it looks like uh, that we're into that portion of free agency where those types of players are starting to, to get their trips around and meeting with teams now that the big dollar free agents have signed. I wonder what the dollar amount would be, but I would think that the 49ers, especially after letting DJ Jones walk, and letting Lake and Tomlinson walk, I feel like they would have enough money to throw a little something at Arden Key and and bring one of those defensive linemen back. And after Bosa, Armstead, DJ Jones, was he the next most valuable defensive lineman last year for the 49ers? Yeah, I'd say he had to be in the in the mix with that. I think for him, it's just the versatility. A guy who can definitely rush from the outside, but I think his money spot was kind of doing some things, rushing from the interior a little bit, kind of, you know, with their little, uh, uh, what are called, stunts and things like that. That was where he kind of had his success the last second half of the season. It was almost like they had a filling out process, had to figure out what exactly did. Well, okay, how do we use him? I know he said he wants to rush from that nine technique, but, oh, wait a minute, it's kind of good running from the interior on these stunts. Let's continue to kind of use him in that way. So uh, I like him, like this motor and things like that. You also continue to have Ebicam who, you know, came on strong a little bit second half of the season as well. But uh, you need depth. And the 49ers, definitely a team that, you know, they, they they went in the trenches a little bit more than maybe most other teams. If Arden Key does get signed somewhere else, I think that immediately, maybe even over offensive line, although offensive line is a need, but you could still kind of look at the offensive line and where those five starters will come from. But things have to go right. You can add depth there. Um, there's some free agents I want to talk about on the offensive line that makes some sense for the 49ers, but maybe defensive line would shoot up to the number one spot for draft needs. If Arden key does sign somewhere else and, and maybe looking at a player who's a little bit one dimensional, but can give you a pass rush off the edge with that 61st pick in the draft. Do you agree with that? Or, or would you still go offensive line or do you think strong safety because there's no starting spot there and you can kind of see the 49ers uh, maybe letting, uh, and actually there was a report today about uh, George Odom who they just signed from, the Indianapolis Colts, he they told him he would be a special teams player primarily, but would have a chance to compete at strong safety with Tarverius Moore and uh, uh, at, at strong safety, which is like, man, is that it? Is that the plan at strong safety? Maybe they're just keeping that in now. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I want to say it, but I'm not going to say it. I'm going to say it. You know, it's just not ideal. <laughs> you know, just to, <laughs> those those three guys doesn't really move the needle for me. I know there are a lot of people that really like the thought of Tarverius more, and I do too. You know, he has the versatility. They tried to play him at corner, and I was like, ah, his movement skills, they just don't say corner to me. But having him at safety and, and you know, being able to kind of fly around there, and there are a few times he made some plays. I, I, I like it, but if that's your plan with strong safety, or at least just the other safety spot, ooh, I might have to make a phone call back to Jaquiski Tart. Yeah, and it's looking like, you know, the longer Tart stays out there, not hearing his name at all, and, and we'll see if he ends up getting the deal, but it's looking like maybe he will be in that position to where he kind of just has to uh, take a deal, and and maybe he does end up coming back to the 49ers on a, on a deal where the 49ers can't really say no to bringing him in. Right. Oh, well, there's always Adrian Colbert. I've seen him out there campaigning to uh, just, at the very least, be a special teamer. And he just had a new yes. child, man. Congratulations to the new yeah. child, Adrian Colbert. Or he's Congrats. having a baby. Having yeah. a baby, too. Congrats to Adrian Colbert. Uh, he is, his wife or girlfriend or whoever is pregnant. And um, he's, she put those pictures on social media today. And yeah, he's been going off for like a week. And maybe it's because he's got a kid coming. But he's like, he's literally calling John Lynch. And John Lynch won't return his phone calls. He's trying to make it. <laughs> he's like, I can play special teams, you know. Uh, but the 49ers might be done there. So I don't know if, if it's in the cards for Colbert. But he's trying. Yeah. I love that. 
let's see. Um, Zadarius Smith. I want to talk about Zadarius Smith, who is a player that I thought maybe the 49ers could when the whole free agency thing started. And there was uh, there was reports that the 49ers were in on Chandler Jones as a defensive end. So, you know, maybe that's the plan. They wanted to go bigger yeah. at an edge rusher. And Zadarius Smith signed a nine-year or had agreed to a $9 million per year contract with the Ravens and then backed out of it. I was like, oh, that's weird because he's had the back injury. I don't know if the 49ers would want to go down that injury path again. But then it turns out he ended up signing a, a better deal. So uh, good job uh, by Zadarius Smith for seeing that other guys were getting $17 million. And he thought, well, I'm only getting half of that way. I think I'm worth a little bit more than that. So Zadarius Smith, according to Ian Rappaport, is agreed to terms with the Minnesota Vikings now, who already is, are bringing back Danelle Hunter, guaranteed him some contracts. So Zadarius Smith is off the market. He was the best pass rusher left. Uh, he signs a three-year deal worth up to $14 million per year with the mm. Minnesota so good job getting five mil more per year, Zadarius Smith. And I, I don't know if the 49ers could have paid him. Back problems after what they've gone through with the D Ford. Yeah. Big, an injured player. Just stay away from those backs. <laughs> Bad backs. All right. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about Oren Burke's contract. The numbers are in there. Really weird contract structure. Uh, I just want to sort of go through the, the losses and the gains for the 49ers in free agency so far. And I've got a con or a, a trade proposal, Croc. Let's put our DM caps on and see if we can fix some teams and get this whole thing squared away once and for all. Next. How about Bill Bars, though? That'll get you squared away every single day. Puffs, the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. Are you kidding me? Great tasting. They're a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. The puffs are fluffy, marshmallowy, and not just your ordinary protein bar they are a treat it's not this chalky waxy substance it is delicious you feel like you're getting a treat oh yeah and built bars are covered in 100 real chocolate too which really will satisfy you when you're looking for that treat of course filled with 17 grams of protein are most built bars and only 130 calories only four grams of sugar and only four grams of net carbs in most built bar flavors not just the puffs there's the old standard flavors as well i love peanut butter uh, they've got mint brownie coconut coconut almond cookies and cream and there's always seasonal flavors popping up all the time at built.com so do yourself a favor and go find yourself some built bars and replace those terrible for you snacks with a good for you snack that tastes fantastic go to built.com use promo code locked 15 to get 15 percent off your order that is promo code locked 15 for 15 percent off at built.com Thanks again, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers your first listen every day. Make sure you're following Locked On NFL, Locked On experts covering the biggest stories around the NFL every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. All right, here's the scoreboard so far, just so we all know where we're at as far as which free agents the 49ers have brought in, which free agents they have lost. The 49ers have added cornerback Charvarius Ward from Kansas City. Uh, and thank you to Matt Mayoko for compiling these so uh, I don't have to keep track myself. It always makes things <laughs> easier. Ray Ray McLeod, wide receiver, kick returner from the Pittsburgh Steelers. George Odom, special teamer and safety from the Indianapolis Colts. Oren Burks, linebacker and special teamer from the Green Bay Packers. And defensive tackle Hassan Ridgeway from the Philadelphia Eagles. Those are the additions for the 49ers so far this offseason. More to come, I'm sure. Um, not on the not on the high end, I, I would not imagine. Those things, those those players are dwindling. Although there's some out there, Tyron Matthew, did he mean Clowney? Mm, I don't know. I, I'm not sure if they fit. Um, I Ross, like the title Clowney. Obviously, you know, like a, a the, production, the yeah. production is not there. But just the thought of somebody that just is a game wrecker, I just, I don't know. I, I know maybe, it's just a name, but. Maybe he would really jive with Kusarek well, and he could get that, you know, more consistent, Jadavian Clowney because you see the flashes all the time and uh, Matt Williamson told me a good story about someone he talks to uh, in the scouting industry that, that it's always um, uh, that loves bringing up Jadavian Clowney because he says you, you watch Jadavian Clowney it's so fun to watch the tape because you'll see five of the best plays and you'll see five of the worst plays and you'll see a whole bunch of plays where you're like what is this guy even doing is he even like pay attention in the meetings is like the wrong assignments like what is going on in this guy's head so and every team doesn't want to keep him around for very long so hey right. I don't know motivated one year contract for Clowney I wouldn't be against it Losses for the 49ers in free agency. Like Danian Tomlinson to the New York Jets. Defensive tackle DJ Jones to Denver. Raheem Mostert is going to the Miami Dolphins. Like that fit. Trenton Cannon, 
special teamer, running back, kick returner to the Tennessee Titans, Sherfield, special teamer, wide receiver to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Tom Compton goes to Denver and Contavious Street, who was not tendered a restricted free agent contract by the 49ers, is heading to the New Orleans Saints. So the 49ers still have some of their own. We talked about Arden Key already. Jordan Willis on the defensive line as well. Marcel Harris, converted linebacker, has not been re-signed. Al Shair has got that second round tender, so he'll be sticking around. Brunskill got the restricted offer or the uh, right of first refusal restricted offer. So uh, Brunskill, unless he signs something silly somewhere, is going to be back as well. Other unrestricted free agents. Running back Jeff Wilson, wide receivers Muhammad Sanu, Travis Benjamin, Richie James, who I forget is still actually on the roster because he was waived and then reverted back to the roster because of a, an injury designation after clearing waivers last year. Uh, tight end Ross Dwelly is a free agent. Defensive backs Tart, Jason Verrett, Dante Johnson, Josh Norman, Tavon Wilson. And those are there's a ton of free agents still for the 49ers to potentially bring back. Any names jumping out to you there? What's the first name you call on the list of players the 49ers still have unsigned out there as re- unrestricted free agents tart tart yeah uh, yeah it's tart would you, would you go harder for tart or key oh probably key i mean you know me i value pass rush more than i do coverage i think you, you need those guys but i don't know i just think tart is just a better football player than key and not to say anything bad about key i, I just that just speaks more on how i feel about tart i think he's a really yeah. good football player so, I, I you know, I, I want as many good football players on the field. And obviously, Key had a terrific year. But, yeah, I, I would go Tart in that situation. I think Tart and Verrett are probably the most likely. Well, I take that back. Dante Johnson is the most likely. But they just might wait till the summertime to bring him back. But Jason Verrett, if he wants to play, you got to give him a shot. But, you know, no no guarantees there. It'd be a very low contract. I think Tart's going to end up coming back at a pretty low number, but maybe he'll find uh, a way to to start somewhere. I don't know how the New York Jets haven't offered something for Tart because right. he's going to make solid defense already. But um, And I know, think safety, they need it. I think they have an open safety spot as well. Yeah, absolutely. They might, they might hit a safety early in the draft. Maybe that's why, but that would seem like just a too obvious fit. And then Jeff, Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson's not going to make any money on the free agent market. Got to bring him back, right? Right. Sanu, Benjamin, Richie James, let them all walk, get some fresh legs in there at wide receiver, right? Yeah. yeah. Sanu, Jeff, yeah, nah, get some fresh. Uh, there, There is something to Sanu I like, even if he's just someone that you bring back and then he ends up on your practice squad for a while, and maybe in a pinch has to, you know, come up and is active on game day. Sanu somebody, he... There's something about him that I like. Not that he's just like this really good football player, but something about the way he vibes with his teammates and receivers and just that old veteran, you know, around. Uh, I like him. He works hard. And I think at the very least, he can be that constant reminder to a lot of the younger guys, even guys like Debo Samuel on, hey, you still got to, you know, prepare at a certain level. He keeps his trainer with him. You know, his trainer like stays with him. You know, you know, who how many guys, how do you guys do you know out there doing that? You know, that just shows how he's always on when it comes to being the best version of himself that he can be. Yeah. And he's a really trustworthy player. He's a really good player when he's out there and when he's healthy. So, you know, health might be part of the problem with him, but um, man. And maybe that's why the 49ers are trying to avoid everybody that's got an injury history right now. Yeah. That that might be part of it. Oren Burks, the details on his contract. This is an odd one. So he's getting veteran minimum, $1.035 million as his base salary in 2022. These numbers from David Lombardi on Twitter. Um, His signing bonus prorated over five seasons. It's a pretty low signing bonus, $1.3 million. But they added void years. They added three void years. It's a two-year contract with three void years just (laughs) just to prorate $1.3 million over five years. That's a really odd structure. Uh, there's teams that throw void years out there, but that's to get a really big signing bonus down a little bit. But three void void years <laughs> to spread out a one point three million dollars that doesn't make any sense. I don't know, and I'm not it's even going to try to make sense of it. Four hundred thousand dollars per year. You're trying to say like that? That is just a weird one. Um, and then some workout bonuses as well. But that is just a really really odd way for a special teams player to to put that contract together. 
anyway, but that is Oren Burks. As Richard Sherman would, would say, he needed an agent to help him with that. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Sherman, he's he's been yeah. kind of giving it to people a little he bit. He has. Hey, well, Richard Sherman wasn't throwing void years onto his contracts. Mm -mm. He just had incentives. I like it. I think every contract should be incentive based. Wouldn't that be sweet? Yeah, I mean, well, it it gives you an incentive to, you know, prepare to a certain level. Yeah. Then you just, I'll you just, can make as much I'll, money as you want. Like it's on, it's up to you. Yeah. How hard do you want to work? Now, the only thing is, I feel like clubs can kind of screw guys. Okay, you need to get a hundred catches to hit this. Bitch Mark and it's like, oh, he's at 90 catches. And they like, you know, the target starts slowing down a little bit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there's no way that would ever happen, as fun as it might be. All right, Croc. Next, I've got a trade proposal for you. I need you to sit in as Matt Rule, head coach of the Carolina Panthers, or Scott Fitter, or GM of the Carolina Panthers. Next, you're going to be the Panthers' war room in a trade negotiation uh, I'm going to be maybe even Don Yee, Jimmy Garoppolo's agent more so than I'm even going to be John Lynch in this, because I think this is a deal that is mutually beneficial for everybody that has to happen. We'll get to that next. But first, I want to tell the folks about something I'm pretty excited about, which is Athletic Greens AG1. It's an unbelievable product. I started taking Athletic Greens because uh, they, well, first of all, they sent it to me and I have never been like a vitamins guy. Have you been a vitamins guy? I don't take a multivitamin at all. Um, and it's, it's when amazing. I was a kid. When I was a kid, I did. Yeah, and my wife tries to get me to do it. But, you know, athletic greens, it kind of, you know, like you said, they, they just put it in front of you. And it, and it felt like if I didn't take it, it's like that, you know, you can lead the horse to the water, but <laughs> you can't make them drink. Well, they led me to the water and I, I drink it. And I'm not going to lie. I feel a lot different every day when I use those, you know, like it's just crazy, the way I right? feel, I, I don't feel as bloated. I've been drinking the, uh, the powder that they gave us, yeah. uh, taking the vitamins, like really good stuff. I, I feel different and that's very rare. Cause I feel like my body isn't very sensitive to, to certain things, but I totally no, noticed the difference since taking athletic greens. And yeah, so I had never been a big vitamins person, but apparently I needed them because after a couple of days of you just take it's easy. You just put your one scoop in in water. You drink eight ounces, 10 ounces, 12 ounces, however you want to dilute it. Uh, and you you drink their AG1 and it's good for your stomach. It's good for you know, optimizes optimizes all of your vitamins and supplements throughout the day. Just one drink in the morning. First thing, empty stomach. Boom, you're done. Super easy, which is what I love about it. It's like make this easy for me. And it did. And after three or four days of taking it and now I'm in my second week, it's like. I feel it. It's like, holy crap, I needed that. Like, whatever it's given me, I needed it. And I can't even pronounce it. I don't even know everything that's in it. But obviously, it's something I absolutely needed. And I feel so much different. I can't believe it. And, um, I, you know, in a lot of ways, you could probably give up your, your daily coffee because it's giving me that extra pep in my step. I can't do that. But, you know, with the coffee and the AG1, I'm definitely feeling better. More energy, for sure. It's lifestyle friendly, whether you eat keto, paleo. Uh, vegan, dairy-free, gluten-free, it fits for you. Less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or anything like that, No, nothing artificial. It's just really good tasting, and it, it not only gives you all of your multivitamins that you need in a day, super easy for your body to absorb, but it's also for gut health. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover. It cost them like $100 a day for all these supplements. It's only $3 a day, less than $3 a day to get everything you need to invest in your health with Athletic Greens AG1. And if you are sensitive, here's like an extra bonus of this that I didn't realize until we were talking about it in the Locked On DMs. If you have a sensitive stomach, if you're lactose intolerant, and maybe you can't get yogurt and get probiotics that way, you can use Athletic Greens, AG1, to for your uh, for your gut health and for all of your probiotics. So uh, it's a really cool product. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop and a cup of water. That's it. Every single day. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. 
To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, Croc. I went a little long on that ad read, but I wanted the folks to know about AG1. It's, the, it's all the energy you have. I mean, I you're great. really out to write coffee and the athletic greens. <laughs> have you noticed the last week of podcasts? I've been a little extra, right? Well, someone in the comments were like, oh, Croc and they're like Croc and Peacock getting kind of like testy or something like that. It was something <laughs> along the lines. Like, man, we just, we got, we have fun. We don't always yeah. have to 100% agree with each other on every single topic. Oh, no. We we shouldn't always agree on everything, even though our you know well trained eyes do kind of see this the the realities that are out there a lot yeah. of times, and we see that same reality. But um, how about this one? I think that Jimmy Garoppolo, Don Yee, his agent, Matt Rule, Panthers head coach, Scott Fitterer, Panthers GM, John Lynch, 49ers GM, they should all be locked into a room for as long as it takes for them to hammer out a deal to get this deal done. This is what every side needs is the Panthers, 49ers, Garoppolo to come together with a trade. Do you agree with that? Because look, this is this is the way I look at it. If Jimmy Garoppolo wants to start, it benefits him to go to the Panthers. And the way you get paid more in the future is to go to the Panthers, even if you have to take a little bit off of that $25 million salary to make this all work, right? For the 49ers, look, you got to save face now. Um, you've If you want to get a pick, a future pick, because... The Panthers don't have a second or third round pick this year. You've got to get, you've got to accept a future pick from the Carolina Panthers. Maybe you can get a player or something like that involved. Um, and you might have to take on some of Sam Darnold's salary to make it worthwhile for everybody. Get yourself a, you know, an expensive backup, maybe, but it, it's a way to make this work out well for everybody. And the 49ers can make that happen unless they just want to cut Jimmy Garoppolo, which clearly they do not. So basically, they'd be you know paying a backup quarterback to get themselves a draft pick. And for Jimmy Garoppolo and Don Yee, it makes sense. For the 49ers, John Lynch, it makes sense. But it actually makes the most sense for the Carolina Panthers. They should be hot after Jimmy Garoppolo. If Matt Rule doesn't find a better quarterback play, he's going to be fired. Matt Rule needs this to happen more than anybody. He's definitely on the hot seat. Yeah, If if and... Some of the responses in this, I put it out on Twitter and they said, oh, they're just going to draft Malik Willis or uh, Kenny Pickett, whoever, with the number six pick in the draft. And look, I mentioned they don't have any day two picks. How good is your team going to be if you just run back the same team you already had and you just throw a rookie quarterback in there with Sam Darnold? You're well, going to be five and 12 and Matt Rule is going to be fired. What does that do for you, right? But you could get Jimmy Garoppolo with a future pick, use that first round pick on getting one of these stud offensive tackles in the draft. Now you're a better football team now, and maybe uh maybe a quarterback falls to you in a certain round that you want to try to develop. Next year, maybe you can go into the draft with a quarterback. You could still go draft a quarterback at six, even if you go get Jimmy Garoppolo. But you, what you would do is you would be a competitive football team. If you want to be a competitive football team, you can't roll out there with Sam Darnold because uh, some people say he's still got upside. I, I'm done with that. Like Sam Darnold does not have – Sam Darnold has zero, zero NFL good NFL tape out there in his career now. And it's been years. At least Jimmy Garoppolo has good NFL tape with some of his flaws, right? So go do yourself a favor, win some games, Matt Rule, and don't get fired. These these three parties can get together and make something mutually beneficial and it's I think the it's the last it's the last chance for Jimmy to be a starter, the last chance for the Panthers to find a starting caliber quarterback for this year. And maybe the last chance for John Lynch to get something back for Jimmy Garoppolo and, and maybe even the 49ers, you know, get that extra draft pick they've been looking for. Well, you said one thing that wasn't true. You said Sam Donald has no good film out there. He does have one good throw <laughs> against the 49ers. <laughs> oh, that's right. Rolling left, that. right? It, yeah. it was, uh, what year was that? That was 2019. 19? Yeah. 2019 with the Jets rolling left, right? Was that what nah, it was? Got out of the 2020. His last year with the Jets. Okay. I think. Yeah. Darnold. So oh, no, yeah, that was uh that was the Nick Mullins game, right? Yeah. Well, well, Jimmy started out hot and Mullins had to come in. Right. That was when Jimmy got hurt. Yeah, okay. 
Um, yeah, so he has that. But, you know, I, I think the bigger thing there, and you touched on it, I think, pretty very well when it comes to Matt Rule. No coach wants to, and this is in response to the Twitter people, oh, they're just going to draft Malik Willis. Yeah, sure. But I'm not which, I'm not hitching the future of me coaching to a rookie. You know who else didn't do that? Kyle Shanahan. Otherwise, he would have just went with uh, Trey Lance. But he said, no, I have one winning season in four years. I have to win. So what did he do? He went with more of the veteran guy and Jimmy Garoppolo. And I think Matt Rule, he needs to do the same. Now, you can't, your job is on the line. You can't go out there and, and draft Malik Willis. You know why? Because you won't get a chance to see it through because after this year, you will be fired. You'll be gone. They already, once you start seeing coordinators kind of dropping off, you saw Joe Brady get fired in the middle of last season. You know who's next? The head coach. All right. So you got to win. And who's going to help you do that or at least give you a better chance? It's not Sam Darnold. It ain't Malik Willis. It's Jimmy G. Yeah. Or get as we like to call him, Jimmy W. Yeah, Jimmy W. Employ a professional quarterback. Yeah. Right? They got some guys there. They got some weapons. Yeah. They got, I, I know mean, a lot. Of, you uh, got to run back. With Jimmy, Jimmy G, DJ Moore. That's perfect. Right? Perfect. That's, well, that's not just plans you know, to the house got, all day. You got Terrace Marshall. I like really, I, I like Terrace Marshall. I'm, I'm gonna see him take that next. The Niners get Terrace Marshall back in the trade. Ooh, I love it. I would have taken him second round last year. So or maybe uh yeah, or the second round of the year before, Yitor Gross Matos, who I really liked. Shadow 49er. Yeah. Yitor Gross Matos. There's your defensive end. Still youthful. Uh, although they let yeah, they don't want to give him up because um Hassan Reddick left in free agency, so they need the edge. But you might be able to get, you might be able to get Terrace Marshall from him, and that's exactly uh, the type of player we've been looking at, right? Well, well, let's negotiate. Okay, give me Terrence Marshall, Terrace Marshall, and next year's second round pick for Jimmy. All right, so so for Jimmy, straight up. So we keep Sam Donald. He's our backup quarterback to Jimmy Garoppolo. That's a lot of money we have tied up to the quarterback position. We're talking about north of $40 million. I don't know if we're okay with that. Okay. We will take half of Sam Darnold's salary. You got to pay half of it, and then we'll take the rest of it with Sam Darnold in this trade. But you got to make it a first-round pick next year instead of a second. Okay. H how about this? It'll be a second. It'll be conditional. Jimmy Garoppolo has to play 12, at least 12 games. If he plays 12 games, then that second round will turn into a first. And you do have to take $9 million of Darnold's contract. Yep. So just know, so you're clear, you're really clear about, hmm, what, $18 million? Yep. That's what you, That's the cap space you save? Getting rid of Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah. And then that's where Don Yee can really help this whole thing out too. Because if Don Yee and Jimmy Garoppolo recognize that this is their only chance to start, and this is the best chance for Jimmy Garoppolo to have a healthy season and earn a lot more money the following free agent period, right? Then maybe Don Yee and Jimmy Garoppolo say, we'll take a few million dollar pay cut on that $25 million. And so you're paying half of Sam Darnold's salary. What if we drop from... 25 to 19 million dollars a year right and now you're almost not sam darnold anything because the niners are paying half and we're knocking that down a little bit so now you're just kind of paying what you're already going to pay the 25 million dollars ish range for for jimmy garoppolo in the first place so that's how don Yee and jimmy garoppolo could grease the situation and really make everybody feel good about it in the end the 49ers get the best return they can possibly get jimmy garoppolo gets a chance to start and you know, physically rehab. Has to start his twelve games now. There's, right. eh, there's a slight chance because we don't know exactly what Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be like away from the 49ers or Patriots. Two really good organizations had two really high caliber officer coordinators. What is he like uh, uh, away from that? We, we don't know. So mm -hmm. again, in this trade, I'm Matt Rule and and Panthers and was it Dave, David Tepper? What is that? Uh, that's David the Tepper. The owner, yeah, Scott Fitter, owner, yeah. GM. Yeah, David right, Tepper so makes make the moves. David yeah. Tepper doesn't want to sit there and lose again with Sam Darnold. Hey, I don't no. want to sit there and lose. I got big money. I paid cash for this team. Straight cash, homie. <laughs> That's right. right. But but uh, Jimmy Garoppolo has to start 12 games. So if he gets beat out by Sam Darnold, 
because you don't know exactly what it's going to look like away, then it's going to be a second in 2023. Are you, you know, okay with that? You know what it would be if the Panthers started Sam Darnold for another season? <laughs> Not ideal. Be ugly. <laughs> Not ideal. Not ideal. Not ideal. All right. Um, sorry. So, so what is it again? What is the final offer? So the final offer is uh, we get Jimmy Garoppolo, and the 49ers get or have to take on nine million dollars of Sam Darnold's money or Jimmy's money, however, you, but nine million dollars is off of the, their quarterback books. Yeah, and the 49ers get a second round pick that if Jimmy Garoppolo starts 12 games, that second round pick turns into a 2023 first rounder. Yeah. 49ers Which should. The 49ers should take, do not have. The 49ers should take that in a heartbeat. I don't know if they would take that in a heartbeat, uh, but they absolutely should. I don't know if the 49ers actually had those offers, those second round offers. Maybe it was the, and look, and this is where if Don Yee and John and Jimmy Garoppolo said no to Washington early on in the process, and then ran out of options. Now it's up to them. It's like, okay, you want to go start somewhere. Now it's up to you. You guys are the ones that screwed this up. You got to take a pay cut on this if you want to go facilitate this thing, right? So um, that's how the money and all this could work. That's how these guys can come together on this deal. I think it benefits the Panthers immensely. I think it benefits the 49ers immensely. It benefits probably Sam Darnold gets another shot to have a, a, a good coach maybe because Matt Rule, who knows if he can coach. And we already know that uh, his former uh, head coach with New York Jets d didn't do a good job coaching him either. So who knows? Maybe the 49ers could turn Sam Darnold into something as a backup. And so, um, and obviously Jimmy Garoppolo wins because he gets to start again in the NFL. Love who it. I'm glad we'd be can... here. Who would have thought we'd be here with Sam Darnold? And they actually started off last year kind of good. <laughs> That's the crazy part about they it. They won a couple of games, but it, is, it wasn't amazing. And they start throwing. Well, because well, what's really? funny is, remember, I always compared bad Jimmy to Sam Darnold. Yeah. Like all the bad stuff that Jimmy does, that's all the time Sam Darnold. So fans are going <laughs> to like seeing Sam Darnold a lot in a 49ers uniform if he's just bad Jimmy all the time, basically. Yeah. With an occasional spaz play that yeah. maybe Jimmy can't do that. Yeah. He's got a little bit extra. He doesn't have a crazy cannon, but he's he can make some off-schedule stuff. It was all about seeing him away from Adam Gase. And that was the, at least the upside, the optimism. And I think the Panthers were betting on that as well. Yep. And then they got him and they're like, ah. Nope, we same kind guy. of uh, made our hand wrong here. <laughs> same so guy familiar. still seeing ghosts. And I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to go through the exact same thing right now with Mitch Trubisky because they didn't see him for a year. And they're like, oh, we'll bet on that upside. Number two overall pick. And we're like, oh, nope. He still can't throw to the left side of the field. Shoot. <laughs> what are <laughs> we going to do now? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. Let's get it done. 49ers, Jimmy G, Panthers. Has to happen. Let's yep. go. Let's do it. Thanks, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers your first listen. For your second listen, check out Croc doing Locked On NFL Draft every single day. I'm doing the Peacock and Williamson NFL show here on the network every day, talking about the entire league. Croc and I back tomorrow right here. Locked On 49ers.